Hello, my name is Maarten Struis. In this Windows Phone 7 video, I'm going to show you some consequences of using a web client when you are calling out to the cloud. For this video, I have a sample application. I created a small WCF based Azure REST service, and we're going to make use of a Windows Phone application, a Windows Phone 7 application to call out to that service, to set a number and to retrieve a number. And we're going to use a web client for that. So let me just quickly show you the Azure based web service that for this demonstration we're going to run locally. So here's my service contract for my web service. What you can see is that I have two RESTful operations. One is a get data and the other one is a post operation being a set data and I can just pass a particular number. And with get data the idea is to retrieve that same number again. The implementation of the service is as follows. So my get data just returns a number formatted as a string. So it's going to be completely restful. And to set a value or to store a value in my Azure web service, what I'm just going to do is store this value in the cloud and return a HTTP status code of OK to the caller. At the same time, I'm having a Windows Phone 7 Azure demo. And this is the user interface of that demonstration. So I can specify a number to be stored in the cloud. And then I'm going to use several retrieval methods, all based on a web client object. And here is the application running. As you can see, there's a little symbol that we have a Wi-Fi connection. And let me just retrieve a number that is stored in the cloud currently. And what you can see is that that number that is stored is number zero. Now I'm going to add another number, so maybe I'm going to store number three in the cloud. And let's just get that same number back. And what you can see is that, hey, there is an issue already because I still have this number zero being retrieved from the cloud. Well, actually, what's going to happen under the hood is that now this time this number is not being retrieved from the cloud, but it's actually cached inside this Windows Phone 7 device. So if I would retrieve that number uncached, what you will see is that, hey, in that situation, I get that number three back from the cloud. If I'm now calling out to a cast value again, then that's still that original value being number zero. And we can see that a little better even if I'm going to add a couple of breakpoints to my solutions. So first off, let's see how I'm retrieving a cast number. We're going to open my source file. And as a matter of fact, this application is making use of an MVVM pattern. So what I'm going to open is my main page view model. And let's just take a look at some of the commands that I'm executing here. So the first one is a get number cached. I'm just going to set a breakpoint there. And what I'm also going to do is set a breakpoint on my running server. And I'm going to set a breakpoint to my get data and set data values here. And let's just try things again. So if I'm going to get a number from my Windows Phone 7 device, what you will see is that, hey, I'm breaking inside my Visual Studio instance that is actually running this Windows Phone 7 demo project. We're going to download asynchronously calling out to the get data method. And if I'm just continue running, what you will see is that I get a value back being zero, but we didn't break in our web server. Now, if I'm storing a new value in the cloud, for instance, number four here, you will see that, hey, my set data method inside my web server now hits that breakpoint. The new value there is four. I'm going to continue running. And what you can see is that if I'm retrieving a number again in a cached situation, I'm just going to go call out to this get data method again. And nothing happens on my server. Now, at the same time, I'm returning that uh, value zero again since that's cached. If I'm getting a number uncached, now you can see that, hey, now we are stopping inside the server. I'm going to retrieve my number being four. And that's now going to be displayed inside my Windows Phone 7 device. Now, in order to get a number uncached, what I'm doing is the following. And let me just um, set another breakpoint so we can take a look at that a little better. So if I'm retrieving a number uncached, 
what we're going to do then is the following. I'm going to retrieve that number and I'm just going to create a new additional part of my URI to which I'm calling out for to retrieve my data inside my cloud servers. What I'm going to do is just add the current number of ticks to it in order to specify a unique um, URL with which I can call this REST-based web service. So if you know that your data inside your web server might change, what you need to do is make use of this uncached mechanism and just create a new URI that is unique, for instance, by making use of tick count. Now, I do have one final interesting observation for you. So I have a web client that was created inside my constructor here. So I'm just creating a new web client and that web client, let me just go to this definition over here. It's just taking a new web client and if I'm running on a device, I'm going to take a real Azure address. Otherwise, I'm going to take a local server address and I just have a couple of event handlers here to show the result of returned data from the cloud servers. And what I want to show you as well is like, hey, what's going to happen? if I'm newing up or creating a new instance of this particular web client method. And so let's just break there. I'm going to continue running. And now we're going to get a number using a new web client. And what you would expect, especially if you're creating a new instance of a web client, is that all this cached information would be destroyed and for a new web client that we would call out to the server again. So let's just take a look what's going to happen. I'm forcing garbage collections and I'm actually doing that twice and you should be aware never do this at home because this is a performance um, penalty that you're paying here but what I want to make sure is that hey um, I don't want to have this web client pending I don't want to have weak references to it any longer and I also don't want to have anything on my finalizer queue regarding this web client and only after that I'm going to create a new web client. If we continue running what you will see is that hey now I'm going to retrieve again that number from the cloud calling out to the URI using the get data method. Well what's going to happen is that again I have this zero being returned and we didn't break in the server. So this is a clear indication that something is stored locally on the device regardless from the fact whether or not I'm creating a new web client. Only initially it's going to call out. So if I'm terminating my application and if I then start the application again, now this time what's going to happen if I'm just getting a number cached is that since this is the first time and we're just reinitializing our system, now we are going to actually break inside the cloud and retrieving the original number. So you have to be aware of the fact that Windows Phone 7, if you're using a web client, makes extensive use of caching and if you want to be certain that you get the latest value that might be available inside a web service, then you need to make sure in case your web service makes use of a RESTful interface to get your numbers uncached by creating a new unique URL each and every time you want to have real data from the server instead of cached server, um, instead of cached data. Hopefully this video together with the blog entry on which it is hosted is useful to you. So once again my name is Maarten Struis. Thank you for watching.